Hey guys, so this is the Claw SM50 Pro closed back studio monitor. Now, when it comes to studio monitors, what sets them apart from normal headphones is that they're supposed to give you a very authentic sound reproduction so that when you're monitoring the sound that you've uh, recorded in your episodes or videos, it needs to sound as authentic and as true to life as possible. So when you monitor that using these, they should be very original and shouldn't add anything else so that once you present that to your audience, they get exactly what you intended them to hear. Now, the Claw SM50 Pros, these cost you 2,500 rupees, which is dirt cheap when you think about studio monitors. So these double as your usual headphones as well. So you can use these to listen to music. So in this episode, I'm gonna break down how these perform as a studio monitor, what was my experience, and also how it performs as a normal pair of headphones for listening to music. All right, so with that said, let's get in with the unboxing. Okay, so the Claw SM50 Pro comes in its usual packaging, nothing too fancy at all. Inside the box, you get the warranty card, a reversible 6.3 mm to 3.5 mm cable with mic, another reversible 3.5 mm to 6.3 mm coiled cable without mic, and of course, the Claw SM50 Pro studio monitor headphones themselves. Okay, so first let's quickly get the specs of this headphone out of the way. So these house 40 millimeter drivers on each of these ear cups and they have an impedance of 32 ohms. So again, while they are low impedance headphones, I would still suggest, and in my experience, I found that uh, when I use these plugged in directly to my PC, the sound that I got was vastly different than when I plugged it into the audio interface, which is a professional one. So yes, when you use a DAC, these do perform much better. You get a whole new level of volume and details. So yes, it does make a difference. Apart from that, on the left ear cup, it's got a 6.3 millimeter audio port. And on the right ear cup, it's got the usual 3.5 millimeter audio port. Now, one feature which I found really useful is something they call the buddy feature. So these are wired headphones. So say you're using the 6.3 millimeter port and it's plugged in and you listen to some music on your phone and your friend wants to listen to what you're listening to. So with the other unused port, which in this case would be say the 3.5 millimeter port, your friend can just plug in his or her earphone into that unused port and listen to what you're listening to in real time. So you can listen to the same thing without disturbing the uh, anybody else around you, without using the speaker. And there is absolutely going to be no delay since it's wired. So the buddy feature, really nifty, and it can be used by any of the unused ports. Now talk about the build quality of the SM50 Pros. So because they cost just 2,500 rupees, obviously they've had to cut corners somewhere. And that is evident when you see the lack of metal anywhere. So it is plastic, but it doesn't feel overly cheap or flimsy. Now, I'm a fan of the headband because it's got the claw logo embossed there and it's got red stitching. It feels very nice to the touch. I'm pretty sure this is faux leather. And also the cushion under the headband is quite soft. So it, it's going to rest gently on your head, not provide too much of pressure. Even the earmuffs are super, super soft. So they are very gentle on your ear. They don't crush your head, unlike many other headphones that have immense pressure and within half an hour or so, your ear and head starts to ache. But with the Claw SM50 Pros, I found that comfort was A-OK, -okay, even for one, one and a half hours or so, and continuously before I just took a break. And for that while, I didn't find these uncomfortable at all. And you can extend the length of these headphones depending on the size of your head with the extenders on either side. So you can find the perfect length to fit your head and that'll even make the headband resting on your head rest even more gently without applying too much pressure. Now the ear cups do swivel 90 degrees so they can turn and you can they can just take up very less space and you can just carry it anywhere. The only thing is that I wish they provided a carry pouch to carry these in and even though they do swivel 90 degrees and maneuvering that is very easy so even when they are turned flat like so and when you rest it on the table they don't sit flat there is a bit of a curve and a bump to it so that is i think a design flaw because if you're packing and if you want things to be absolutely flat that's not going to be the case so it's something very minor but something i wish that wasn't there now as i said before these come with two supplied cables so one is the 6.3 millimeter to 3.5 millimeter reversible cable with a mic 
So if it's plugged into your PC or to your phone, you can use the microphone to take calls. Now the other one is intended for more professional use, which is the 3.5 millimeter to 6.3 millimeter reversible coiled cable without a microphone. And I would suggest that for most of your professional use, you use the coiled cable because it is much more greater in length and the quality of it as well is mighty impressive. All right, so with all the features, the build quality, etc., out of the way, now let's talk about the main criteria, which is the audio quality. How did it perform as a studio monitoring headphone? And how does it perform as your usual daily driver in terms of just your casual music listening? So you guys know that when I judge any sort of audio product, I judge them based on how they produce the three frequencies that broadly make up any sound that you hear. The highs, the mids, and the lows. The highs or the treble where the really sharp sounding instruments are, the mids where the vocals lie, and the low end or the bass. Okay, so starting off with the higher frequencies or the treble response. Now the treble response for the most part was pretty impressive. So all the instruments that uh, were lying in the higher frequency range were clearly audible. There was no distortion in the form of crackling. There was no sibilance as well, where the S's get extremely sharp and unpleasant. The only thing I felt it was lacking was a bit more richness. So now this is me talking from the perspective of using these as your music listening headphones. It was pretty sharp, had a lot of clarity, but lacked detail. Now as for monitoring, the highs were okay because anything you want to monitor in the higher frequency range was clearly audible. So as a studio monitoring headphone, it performed better in the higher frequencies. As for usual music listening experience, I would say the highs, while sharp, lacked a bit of detail. Now coming to the vocals or the mid frequencies. So first talking from the perspective of monitoring headphones, I use these to balance my vocals when I was editing a video previously. And I could do that with a lot of ease. So I could exactly tune the audio exactly how I wanted it to be. And I could get out all the details I wanted. So that worked out pretty good. Talking from the perspective of headphones to use for listening to music or songs, the vocals for the most part sounded pretty good. And the vocals had a lot of detail and sharpness as well. It lacked just a bit of warmth and a bit of the authentic tonality, which is present in the vocals. I felt it was trying to artificially sharpen the vocals just a tad bit and it could have sounded a bit more clean. Sometimes it would sound a bit muffled, especially the higher you raise the volume, the more muffled it gets. So I would say around 65 to 70 percent is the max that you should push the volume. Again, this is when I was using it with a audio interface or a DAC, but when I was using it directly from my PC, I even at say 80% volume, there was not so much of that muffled uh, rendition, but still there was lack of the clean rendition of the vocals, the higher I raised the volume. So these are a few points that I've uh, just noticed, but for studio monitoring headphones, these worked out pretty good. And finally, we come to the low end or the bass response. Now, these do pack a lot of bass, quite thick, and very powerful, obviously owing to the 40 millimeter drivers packed inside, but it is not the best bass. So at 100% volume, the bass gets really muffled, buddy, and it starts to distort, which is obviously disappointing. So it couldn't handle the bass response from the track. I found that the max you can push the volume to if you're using a DAC or an audio interface was say around 70% is the max and anything lower would be better. If the volume suffices, I would say 65% is the best, where you get the real thump of the bass, that depth as well, and it doesn't distort. Anything higher and you're gonna get a bit of that muddiness and it's just, it doesn't sound good at all. For monitoring, I didn't have to turn the volume up all the way to, and because I don't produce music, I just like to edit my uh, audio when I'm doing post-processing. So for that purpose, uh, the, the bass response was okay. But for listening to music on a daily basis, again, that limit of volume should be 65 to 70% if you want to get the balance between detail and undistorted bass. So anything higher and it gets distorted. So that's the only thing that I noticed when it comes to the bass response. So guys, just to summarize, overall for 2,500 rupees, the Claw SM50 Pro works out pretty good as a pair of studio monitoring headphones. It does the job perfectly, at least it did for me. 
for your daily music listening experience. While this is not the best, at the same time, it's by no means any slouch. It's going to do just fine. For any general listener, it's going to be way above anything you can complain. So it's going to do the job just fine. And you're going to be surprised by how deep the bass gets. So there you have it, guys. That was my very detailed and unbiased review of the Claw SM50 Pro closed pack studio monitors. I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any other questions regarding this uh, headphone, do let me know in the comment section below. I'll try my best to answer them. As always, the link to this headphone will be in the description below. I would really appreciate that if you do decide to pick these up, please use that link to make your purchase that you can help me run this channel and I can produce more such high quality and helpful content just for you guys. Make sure to smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, share this video with someone who is on the lookout for uh, affordable headphones. And that's about it. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll catch you guys very soon in the next one. Cheers.